Have you guys heard about the food service industry in Atlanta? It seems like a lot of people aren't happy with it. I feel like Atlanta is known for a lot of like history, sports, entertainment industry. And you would think food because it's a big metropolitan city. I, I don't know why. I just have this assumption because I came from a smaller town and we didn't have no good food there. We just had chain restaurants. You would think that Atlanta has some good ass food. I personally would have assumed that Atlanta has good food. But recently, Keith Lee who is a pretty popular food critic. He's got like 9 million followers on TikTok. He came to Atlanta and the restaurants are scrambling. Popular TikToker Keith Lee is causing a lot of conversation on social media. But is it in bad taste? There's been a lot of talk about this on social oh, yeah. media. I think being like a critic of anything, whether it's makeup or food or something of that nature, it kinda, it's a little difficult. At first, especially with Keith Lee, like he comes on, he seems very authentic. He's a Las Vegas food reviewer and he just seems like a normal dude that is rating local restaurants. I think what was interesting was Keith Lee started off as a food critic in Vegas and he just got to try so many different options because Vegas is a pretty big city. So Keith kind of starts to blow up. He gets pretty popular off of his food reviews and like I was saying before, Word, the authentic part was a really big piece of it because a lot of times these content creators will start reviewing things authentically and then we start seeing them get all these deals and you're not really sure like even if it's a sponsored whether they're selling out or not like straight up and I remember a while ago hearing that some beauty influencers on TikTok were making like a hundred thousand dollars her ad. A hundred thousand dollars? Shit, I might lie to somebody for a hundred thousand dollars. So you know they lying. So I, I kind of feel like I, I feel like my trust in TikTok content creators or TikTok critics kind of wavered a little bit. I really trusted Keith Lee in the beginning and then I kind of was like, ah, oh, you know, you never know with these people. But he did a lot of good. Like for example, one of them was this uh, pizza parlor called Frankerson's. And he did a review of them and they had people lining up out of the door for weeks. For months after that, I looked at Frankerson's TikTok page and they have over 400,000 followers still and they post all the time. Like this pizza place may not have still existed up until this point or they definitely wouldn't have been doing as well if this review hadn't just blown up and all these people wanted to try it out. Keith really gets known for elevating smaller businesses in the area. But I mean, he was not immune to critiques. He had a couple different critics come after him for a few things, but a big one too was people saying that Keith Lee's reviews were so prominent that they were destroying some small businesses. No, that's what people say. And through a couple of his controversies, I personally feel like he's given good responses to it. Like they were a little PR-y, but they overall felt good. And he's just kind of skated by without any major, major controversy. Except this week, something a little interesting happened. Keith Lee, gets to Atlanta. He reviews the first restaurant and it's, you know, it's not, it's not that great of a review. But then he gets to the second restaurant. Now this second restaurant, it's called The Real Milk and Honey. This is a brunch spot in Atlanta. Look, I'm sorry, it feels like these people take them as a little too seriously because they got an Instagram verified check mark in the damn logo. The way they describe themselves says, founded in 2019, located on Main Street in the heart of the historic College Park. The real milk and honey is a total brunch vibe curated for everyone to enjoy that over the top brunch menu. Don't be surprised if you're sitting across from your favorite singer or movie star. It's just that real. <laughs> and then Keith, gives them a review. Me and my family are in Atlanta and currently we are at the Real Milk and Honey. I got it, let's try it and rate it one through 10. As you can see, I don't have any bags in my hands. We are at the Real Milk and Honey on Main Street and College Park. Before we came, we attempted to call our order in. We were greeted with an automatic message that said they do not take call-in orders. The automatic message said the only way you can do pickup is through DoorDash. We went through DoorDash. Now, they don't accept call-in orders. I think sometimes for really, really small businesses, this can work. The reason that a lot of times businesses, especially small ones will do this, is because sometimes people call in food and they don't pick it up. When you work at big chain restaurants or you're boasting that you're successful and like popular like this, you either take a deposit or you just eat the cost on the orders that don't come through. Like if the order's over $75, take a card or just like put it through DoorDash or something. So I think it's a little silly to not do any pickup orders at all. Through DoorDash, they was closed. But online, it said they closed at five o'clock. We went on DoorDash at four o'clock, but we were already here, oh. so we just went inside. I stayed in the car and my family went in and they told them they were closed early for deep cleaning. Yet the door's wide open and it's people still going in and grabbing orders. Oh, now we have no idea. Y'all, I 
I hate that so much. You know when you look at a restaurant and it says they're still open and you roll up and the door is closed. Lights are off. Nobody's home. Maybe just one person that looks at the door, sees you, and then turns around. I mean, shit. If I see restaurants closing in 45 minutes, I won't go there. But if you guys were supposed to be open two hours earlier. Yeah, if those people order beforehand or what the case is. Also, the people who relayed this message, my family said were really nice. It's just the rules. And so far being in Atlanta, I found some places do have unique rules. And this is one of them. I want to be very clear. We're not blaming one person or saying one person was rude in plain terms. Don't call this restaurant trying to get nobody fired. Ain't nobody do nothing. This is just the rules they had. If you don't like their rules, the rules not for you. And for me and my family, the rules just went for us. We just not their target audience. For the record, afterwards, I did walk in and they did recognize me and they attended the service. Wait, how did he layer the audio on this like it's the, uh, the bridge of a 90s song? <laughs> like, what? But I respectfully decline. I'm a normal person. I pay for my food like everybody else. I walk in spots like everybody else. We are all normal people. Respectfully, if you're not going to do it then, don't do it now. Okay, so if you guys missed that part, Keith basically says his family went into order and they said, nah, sorry, we're closed. And then he was like, all right. So he walks inside and then they try to take his order. And he said, nah, we're good. But I am going to make this very clear. I do not support, condone, or agree tearing down these businesses. While we personally may not have the best customer service experience, that does not mean you will have the same experience. That also don't mean go on Twitter and tear these businesses down. At the end of the day, business owners are people. You never know what people are going through. The only reason I'm even making this is to share my authentic and real experience like I always do. I don't mean no harm, I don't have no malicious intent, but I always say I'm gonna be 100% honest and that come with the good and the not so good. You don't know what nobody going through. So what we can't do is just judge off of somebody else's experience. If you like to go to these places or any other place that I've been to, I encourage you to go try it for yourself and make your own opinion. But we still in Atlanta and we on Main Street and it's a bunch of spots here. So we Uh oh, then that's really part of what set it all off. He said, we're still in Atlanta and there's a lot of spots here. Now, I do just wanna say, one of his criticisms before were his reviews, if they're bad, they can tank a small business. So he does a lot there to try to be like, hey, you guys make your own opinions, don't go harass these people, but I'm just letting you know what my experience is because if I approach it like a normal person and send my family in and they have a bad experience, that's probably what yours is gonna be too. So when this video goes out, immediately a bunch of the people in Atlanta started lighting up. They said, oh shit, Keith Lee is here. Keith Lee is here and he's about to expose all y'all because apparently in Atlanta, there are some really good spots. We're gonna kind of run through the gambit of what happened with Keith Lee in Atlanta. And he did give some good reviews on some places. And I'm sure there's lots of really good local spots in Atlanta, but it seems to me from people's overall commentary on TikTok, there's a lot of restaurants in Atlanta that overprice their food. They don't take to go orders. They give terrible customer service. <laughs> they said that they just don't want people's money. Bro, I just watched a Keith Lee follow up video. And he said one of the restaurants had a two and a half hour wait for food. Two and a half hours. I don't know what I can do in two and a half hours. There is no, you are out of your goddamn mind if you think I waited two and a half hours for some food. I thought this was especially funny because Cardi B did a whole live Instagram rant about Atlanta food. They don't like to make money. I feel like they don't like people. They don't like their customers. They just don't like it. Which I'll show you at the end of this, but let's keep going through this journey. Like I said, everybody in Atlanta is immediately on edge. They're like, oh shit, Keith Lee is here. They're having all hands meetings in the kitchen that people never had before. They're telling people to mind their P's and Q's on the phone because he's sending his family in. They're like, okay, his mom is there and his two sisters. Here's a video. Here's what they look like. <laughs> so when this critique comes out, other people start chiming in. And I just found this video and I thought this was mad funny because <laughs> guy that went to the real milk and honey and apparently also had a bad experience that boy keith lee in atlanta now hey y'all are y'all little booze at restaurants y'all gotta get on your goddamn zone now hey uh milk and honey uh-huh see that was how i get for giving me attitude when i told y'all my partner was just down the street parking the car he right now like we can sit down yeah. <laughs> dude that one has me drooling <laughs> This is what I mean about people's excitement for restaurants like Milk and Honey that are like really bougie and like just very like fuck you. They're like, okay, here we go. Atlanta's revenge. Come on, Keith, keep hitting these restaurants. Hey, I think I got my order wrong. No, we didn't. Well, no, because I had Shut ordered the fuck oh. up. We're closed. The sign says that you guys are open until eight. It's literally only five. We're closed for deep cleaning. We're mopping the tables and vacuuming the windows. You cannot dine in here right now. So the real mi milk and honey actually responded. Now I had to dig through because I was like, is this real? Did they really post this? And I found a lot of TikToks that had the original screenshot on the real milk and honey page. This is what the restaurant posted on their TikTok. <laughs> Did you see this Keith Lee video about the real milk and honey? And who is this Keith Lee? Daddy. 
You don't know Keith Lee? Yeah. No. <laughs> that's that's their response to it. Oh, who is Keith Lee? We're so rich. We're doing so well. Screw this guy. I mean, it was it was it's not funny. And it's just kind of embarrassing. It's big yikes. So this description that they put on their Instagram, or not on Instagram, this was the caption on it. I had to screen cap this from another video where somebody else was talking. You can see the side of her head over here. First and foremost, thank you, Keith Lee, for your pop-up and honest assessment, and for your acknowledgement of understanding that negative vibrations never win. Stay doing what you do and being a positive brother. Second, Let's address the negative people that obviously need time to heal within themselves as they came in really, not without actually hearing or had a real understanding for what you actually communicate. Every business is small or large, successful, or not has worked really hard to try their best to make, I mean, come on. It's such a, it's such a goopy response. I never dragged down anyone's business even if I've had a disappointing moment because I have principles. Like, come on, dude. That's so embarrassing. It's not looking good. It's not looking good. But this is an opportunity for all the restaurants to get it together just for a couple days. They don't know how long Keith is going to be in town and they don't know where he's going to strike next. So like I said, he did give a couple of restaurants pretty decent reviews. Juicy Jerk Atlanta, they got a good one. There was also the seafood menu Atlanta. And apparently they don't have separate uh, deep fryers for their seafood and their other things. And Keith was allergic to shellfish. So he was like, all right, well, I guess I'll just let my sisters eat it. So he didn't even review that restaurant. The man was trying though. He was trying. Here's a review from Old Lady Gang. Yesterday, me and my family were at the One Music Festival. Somebody who works with Candy Bears walked up to us and said they've been trying to reach us since we got to Atlanta. He said he'd been constantly emailing me and constantly DMing me for oh, me no. to come to Old Lady Gang. I got it. Let's try it and rate it one through 10. As you can see, I don't have any bags in my hands. Me and my family oh, showed up no! and we attempted to order before we got here. We called the number they had connected on Yelp three times, no answer. We tried to order through DoorDash and it said it was temporarily closed. So when we pulled up, I sent my family in to order for us. They said on the weekends, due to being busy, they don't do any takeout at all. They do to go order? No, we don't do to on the weekend. Oh, okay, so sit in dining. Yes. Okay, thank you, sweetie. Which is completely understandable. So what we decided to do is my family's gonna go eat. They're just gonna come bring the food out while I'm sitting <laughs> in the car. So they have no idea I'm here. My family asked how long the wait was to be seated. They said an hour to an hour and a half. Yes, hour and a half. Okay. She also said they didn't have any reservations available. So they didn't take out any number, any contact information. They told his family it was a 90 minute wait and they didn't take a name for the wait list. They didn't, there was no reservations, no nothing. They were just like, yeah, it's gonna be 90 minutes. And she's like, okay, well, I'll wait. I can't imagine that. Like, if some if a restaurant told me that I had to wait 60 minutes or 90 minutes, you're gonna take my name down so I don't lose my place in line. And then came and relayed that message to me and I decided to go in myself. <laughs> we walked in and we were greeted by a nice young lady. And then I met some amazing people who were eating there and we took some pictures. God is amazing. As soon as me and my wife- <laughs> Wait, do you see what he did there? What he said just happened? <laughs> So his family gets told 90 minutes and then he said that he gonna walk in and he walks in, the hostess talks to him and then people immediately say, oh, Keith Lee, Keith Lee. And they want to take pictures with him in the restaurant. <laughs> Wife are done taking pictures. The lady said the table was ready. As the always, I don't want any special treatment. Ready. I want to be treated like everybody else. I pay for my oh, food like everybody else. The table was ready after the photo session? Oh, I bet it was. Adios. I'm a normal person. I'm a normal customer. Things like this is exactly why I do reviews the way I do. Just because I have a certain amount of followers on social media don't make me different from nobody. My mom, my mom-in-law, my sister, they all paying customers just like me. So I want them to be treated just like me. So I asked how long the wait time has been today. She said an hour to an hour and a half. So which I didn't ask, how were you able to sit me in five minutes? Ooh. This is her response. How long are we looking for as far as waiting? I'm going to get a minute. Nobody on the wait list I called and came. 90 minutes? Bitch, that would be 20 people on the wait list. Why are y'all lying like that? Like, that's crazy. I worked as a waitress and hostess and a bartender for many years. Like, I get, I get, like, you know, some situations in hosting. But going from 90 minutes to we got the table right there, like, nah, bro, that's special service. Now it's whoever first come, first serve. Again, my family just attempted to eat there less than two minutes ago. I didn't tell her, I changed my mind, we're gonna go eat somewhere else, and I said, God bless you, and I walked out. On second thought, it's okay. We're we gonna go eat somewhere else. So I appreciate <laughs> it, though. For sure. Thank you. God bless you. Thank you. Y'all have a great day. Have a good one. Have a great day. 
I'm gonna be very transparent and honest. I am frustrated. Me and my family just trying to eat food. That's all we try to do. At the same time, I am frustrated. I understand we are all human. And Atlanta has definitely been a unique experience for me and something I'll never forget. That's Thank a you for real nice me. way to say it. Atlanta has been a unique experience for me. Like I said, there's a whole bunch of different creators that make videos in response to this, like jokes about people calling their PR, calling their management, saying Keith, Keith Lee's in town. We gotta make sure our stuff is right. Apparently the service in Atlanta is really genuinely that bad. So then this morning I stumble on a live where Cardi B, even though the screen is black, starts talking about how difficult the restaurants in Atlanta are. And like first thing first, right? I feel like Atlanta restaurants, they don't like to make money. I feel like they don't like people. They don't like their customers. They just don't fucking like it. First thing first, right? You could barely order in Atlanta restaurants. Like you go like, hey, I would like to make order. Oh yeah, we don't make, we don't, we don't take orders. We don't take orders. Are there cities like that? where the restaurants are like, we just don't take to-go orders. I've actually never heard of that before and everyone says that's a thing in Atlanta. It gets to the point that I literally have to name, like I have to tell like people that order food for me, like, can you just name drop my name? Because first and first, they just don't, they don't do no pickup orders, they don't do deliveries, they just don't do shit. Cardi says she has to tell her assistant to name drop her to get her food. She pull up to Milk and Honey and they're like, sorry, we don't take to-go orders. I'm like, Please, it's for Cardi B. <laughs> Atlanta restaurants, right? They be closed on the most random sh Like it's like you look at a rest, you go looking for a restaurant on Google, and it's like, oh, this sh look good. What do you mean, y'all niggas is closed Monday through Wednesday, <laughs> or they just have the most random days closed? Like, oh, they close on through, Tuesday, Monday or Wednesday. like it's just the most random shit. Like it's like y'all motherfuckers don't like making bread. Like I don't. <laughs> Get it. Her being so mad about this is so funny. The concept of Atlanta restaurants with bad customer service getting called out as a whole is like, I've never heard of this before. This is just hilarious to me. I feel bad for Atlanta residents. <laughs> Y'all have to go through, thank, thank you Jesus, I'm famous, but even when, <laughs> even me being famous is, is, is like a hassle. It's a hassle. I don't know. What do you think? I don't, I don't know if there's restaurants in other cities that are like this, but I could totally see Atlanta being, I don't know, a little overpriced. People say the food is not worth the money. The customer service is bad and they don't care.